Hello, we're going to get started and we're going to be talking about heteroscedasticity in this chapter. Um, and the first thing we want to do, well, maybe we should define what heteroscedasticity is really quickly. Um, so if I just break the word apart, hetero means different, scedasticity, spread, or the way I like to put it is it's spreadity outediness. All right, I know that's a funny word, and I like the word because it's funny, but it's different spreadity outediness. In other words, as as we look at how some piece of data is spread out, how it how it's dispersed, that changes over some domain. So over time, it changes over um, relative to one of the dependent variables. Um, it changes relative to one of the independent variables. It changes. That's what we're talking about with heteroscedasticity. It's just that there's pattern in Roughly speaking, there's pattern in the residuals in that how those residuals spread out changes. And so that's what we mean by that. And that causes some issues. And we're going to talk about those issues in a subsequent um, lecture. But for right now in this one, I just want to look at, OK, how do we spot this very, very simply using a scatter plot? Um, we'll talk about formal testing in another um, in another lecture as well. But for now, plot the data. Always plot the data. It can save so many really horrible, huge mistakes by just simply plotting the data. So let's take a look. Heteroscedasticity occurs when the variance of all observations is just not the same overall. Okay, as, as we move across something, all right, that variance changes. So that random variable y, um, or in particular y hat, and the random error e, or the um, uh, error terms or the residual terms are heteroscedastic if those if those error terms are, or if they have a different variance over time. And remember, we know that y hat and e hat are going to have the same variance. And if that changes over some domain, then we've got heteroscedasticity. All right. And conversely, of course, if it doesn't change, then guess what? We have homoscedastic or we meet the assumptions of linear regression. All right. So we have those classical assumptions of regression. One of those is no heteroscedasticity. So, bang. Let's keep moving forward. There's a little bit of a definition. And then we'll take a look at this kind of graphically. We can see, suppose we have um, um, observations of our y hat. All right, so this is our y hat. Okay, that's what y is given our x's. So our expected value of y given our x's. This is just fancy notation for that ordinary least squares. Okay, it's our y hats. And that, of course, is a random variable and it has a variance. And that variance is described by how wide that distribution is because, well, that's a random variable. So it's going to have a distribution. Okay, that's fine. And, and here along this axis, we have an x. All right, that's one of our um, independent variables. Now, if at different observations of x, we have different spreads, that's heteroscedasticity. So that's what this looks like kind of in a very abstract three-dimensional kind of um, view of it. All right. If that helps, great. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Basically, it means we have different spreadity outediness. So let's have a look. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at um, this, uh, uh, an example we looked at in a previous chapter that's trying to explain food expenditure based on household income. So we have household income and total weekly food expenditure. All right, measured in units, it doesn't really matter what the units are. They're, they're consistent, so we're not going to worry about that for right this second. All right, and we're just going to put that into a nice linear model. Easy peasy. We've talked about LM. That simply estimates a linear model or ordinary least squares. And so easy peasy. One thing you might notice is I've gotten a little bit lazy. There actually is a package um, that has all the data from our textbook. And so I'm just using that package to, to pull in that data. Before you run this command, you'll need to make sure that this um, package has been installed. I have had a little bit of trouble getting that to install on a Mac. I had to go to the GitHub version of it um, to get it installed on a Mac. But to install on a, on Windows PC, I have not had any issues whatsoever. OK, so there you go. Um, and here is our data. What we have is a simple linear regression with one 
independent variable or independent variable and our dependent variable you see the scatter plot is our dots and the line here is our actual um, equation so that's our ols equation that's our best fit line and if i draw some lines here around my dots it looks like this all right they spread out okay they get bigger all right so down here the spread's not very big up here the spread's really big classic classic heteroscedasticity all right that's exactly what we see here imagine that i'm using that as an example for um when we're talking about heteroscedasticity it's yeah there we go so this is actually a plot i like better um it's plot dot fitted um it's our our residuals versus fits plot now the reason why i like this better is if I do multiple regression, which you're almost always going to do, you're never going to have just one independent variable. At least very rarely will you have just one independent variable. However, when you have more than one independent variable, you're going to have one of these plots for every single independent variable. But you're only going to have one of these plots for each model you estimate for a linear model. Um, and so what you're doing is you're kind of, you, you get some dimensional reduction here. And so this is our plot.fitted. Remember, I, I introduced this function. It's a function I've written for you to do this. Um, it's available in the notes, but um, it just does, does our residuals versus fit plot, makes it kind of pretty. It makes it fairly easy to do. Um, and we can see here, of course, this is, one standard error of regression away from zero, and this is two standard errors of regression, plus or minus zero. All right, and that standard error of regression is the standard error of the residuals or the standard error of y, either one. Now, because we have heteroscedasticity, it's kind of the average standard error over this whole sample rather than the actual standard error, because guess what? The variance of those residuals is changing as we have more and more as our, our as we move across the um, levels of expenditure. So one of the things I really like about this plot is you're going to be able to see a lot of things in one plot. So again, like I've said, if I only have one diagnostic tool, I can only use it, look at one plot to evaluate a model. First of all, I'm gonna complain bitterly about only being able to look at one. I wanna look at lots, but if I can only do one, I wanna look at this one. Okay, so clearly we have some heteroscedasticity here. This is not hard to see. Right? Sometimes it's harder to see, I'll grant you, and you won't always be able to see it from a plot like this. Sometimes we'll need the formal tests as well. That's why we do both. Okay, so there are two important implications of having heteroscedasticity, right? The first one is the linear least squares under n is still unbiased. So those um, estimators, so the coefficients aren't wrong, but they're not best. There is another estimator out there. Not sure exactly what it is. There's a lot of different ways it could be, but there's another estimator out there that's going to give you a smaller variance or the standard error on each one of those coefficients, a smaller version of that, All right? So there's going to be a better estimator. Now, here's the question. Will there be one that's enough better to make it worth the, the hassle of using it? Not necessarily. You may get very, very small gains. But still, in theory, the OLS estimator will not be best anymore. But it still will be unbiased. Okay, so that's important to know. Next, standard errors for that are computed are wrong. And thus, our confidence intervals and hypothesis tests could also be wrong. Right? Not necessarily. I mean, they may not, basically, these standard errors may not be wrong by much, or they may be wrong by a lot. I don't know without figuring it out, but we know they're wrong. So what we'll want to do, and we'll talk about this in a subsequent lecture, is use robust standard errors. Great job, guys. All right, talk to you in the next lecture.